What's up, guys? This is Mr. O'Brien. Uh, today's uh, lecture series will be regarding the formation of covalent bonds. This is a part one of two, and we're going to be talking about the information regarding section 9.1 and 9.3 in your textbook. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, covalent bonds are an attraction between atoms with really large electronegativities um, relative to those uh, metal ones. Uh, and the connections between them uh, result in small differences of electronegativity. So what does that mean? Let's go ahead and get started with that idea. So covalent bonds are formed when atoms of nonmetals attempt to share electrons because their electronegativities are rather similar. Now if you look on the picture to the right here, the image, you'll see that the two atoms are clearly they're different atoms, um, are actually sharing electrons as electrons go back and forth. The valence electrons. Now you might be wondering, well, dude, they don't look like they're sharing. It looks like they're stealing. Well, they're not stealing because the electrons are given back and forth, right? You might be wondering, well, that's not fair. One of them has more electrons around it than the other one. Well, that's just maybe the nature of how they share, because we'll be talking about different ways of sharing. Ultimately, what you got to know is that covalent bonds, right, are connections. These connections here that are created because electron, these atoms have a really high electronegativity. And because they have a high electronegativity, they share electrons. Now, how they share might be a little different uh, based on their connections, right? So um, how are they essentially held together if they're shared? Because remember, holding things together has to come about a plus and a minus. So where is the plus and the minus if they don't steal? So the plus and the minus comes from the attraction between the nuclei of one of those atoms and the valence electrons that they're sharing of the other. Here is the Coulombic attraction. Here is the electrostatic force that comes from covalent bonding. Now, that electrostatic force is also present here as well, right? Now, there are some repulsions ho happening. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. But the electrostatic force, what holds them together, is this attraction between the nucleus and those valence electrons, which is different from those ionic bonds in which we have the plus ions hooking up with the negative ions. Right? Um, here's an example of a covalent uh, of a molecule bonded through covalent bonds. Um, you see here, carbon dioxide, a C, is a connected to oxygen with two lines. And we'll talk about what these two lines represent later on in the lecture series. And you might look at these two dots here, and there's dots here. Hopefully you recognize that the dots are showing you the number of uh, valence electrons uh, present. So we'll learn more about this structure of uh, CO2, of dry ice. So let's move on. Um, the next part is having some kind of uh, warming up with some questions. So Take a look at some questions regarding covalent bonding. And uh, if you have a hard time with these questions, hit me up at tutorial, um, and we can go over them together. So an important piece about bonds is to sh illustrate how these bonds are created. And we're going to be talking about covalent bonds, which are different from ionic, because we are going to be looking at sharing. Now remember that the sharing happens with lines, as you already saw um, in the previous slide. So there are some three steps to, sh to uh, creating these um, connections. And I'm going to go over them in an example of water. So let's start. So when you want to draw the electron dot structure for water, you have to first sum up the valence electrons. So when I sum up the number of valence electrons from the periodic table, as you recall, right, that, uh, that shape we can find from the group numbers right up here, we find out that hydrogen possesses one valence electron and oxygen has six. So there's a total of eight valence electrons. So now that we have eight valence electrons, our next step is to form a bond between the atoms. So let's go ahead and create a, that bond. So I'm going to put an H on the left side, a line connecting to the O, and then another line connecting to another H. Now i got to show these connections, and these connections are the sharing of electrons. Now, what do I do now? So I've used, if you recall, two valence electrons and two valence electrons to create this bond. How do I know that? Because sharing electrons contains two electrons apiece. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract the 8 minus the 4 that I used, and I have 4 valence electrons left to use up. Well, i got to make those 4 electrons octets for elements who need octets. And so I'm going to go ahead and place them around the oxygen as so. Now I can place them that direction, or I can place them this way. Okay. Um, now you'll notice that I have an octet, and I have an octet around oxygen. How do I know that? 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. But around hydrogen, there is no octet. Right, there's just two electrons. And you can see here, as I'm drawing this, I'm showing the overlapping of electron clouds that happens because of the sharing. Consider this question here. So students, a student drew this backbone for step two for water. What's wrong with this backbone? Well, if you can see here, if I just draw the circle around hydrogen, you'll notice that hydrogen is shown to have four electrons around it. And you can't have four valence electrons around hydrogen because it's small. It wants to be like helium, so it can only hold two. That's why hydrogen is usually a terminal atom. It's always on the ends of the, of the connections. All right, with that said, why don't you try these out? These are the simple uh, electron dot structures for covalent bonds. So try these out, and then we're going to move on. If you have any questions, hit me up at tutorial. But what about with molecules that have more than one bond, these more uh, uh, challenging ones? Well, let's, take, let's try oxygen for that matter. So when we try oxygen, we're going to first sum up the valence electrons for oxygen. And as you can see for oxygen, each O has two, uh, six electrons apiece. So when I add them together, I'm going to get 12 electrons. Now, i got to make that connection between each of the O's. So right now, so far, I've used two valence electrons. So how much do I have left? Well, 12 valence electrons minus 2 gets me 10 valence electrons. These 10 valence electrons, I have to somehow distribute them to make them octets. So I kind of try this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's my 10, which shows my total of 12. But if you notice here that there is an octet here, but not an octet here. And because we're missing those, we're missing an octet here, we need to start to rearrange. We have to rearrange to make octets. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and grab one of these electrons from the oxygen and put them in the middle. So when you put them in the middle, what you're going to get is you're going to get this example here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Notice I did not add any more electrons. It's usually a pitfall for some students. We don't add any more valence electrons. What I did is I got electrons that this guy wasn't sharing, and I made him share. So now what you can see here is I have 2, 4, 6, 8. I have here 2, 4, 6, 8. And so now we have a sharing of four valence electrons in the middle. We call this a double bond, right? Now, uh, try these problems out, which are a little bit more challenging. And if you have questions on these ones, hit me back up for tutorial, OK? The last piece that I want to cover is what's the deal with these different doubles and singles and triple bonds? Well, the strength of a covalent bond really is relatively weak compared to its like ionic bond or metallic bond. And the reason why they're weak is because there are competing forces inside a molecule. There are these forces that want to repel from the valence electrons of the other atoms. There are forces that want to repel from the nuclei of each atom. right? But what ultimately wins out is that the electrostatic force, which is the connection between the plus and the minus, really wins. And that winning happens because we have this connection between the valence electrons and the nuclei of the other. This connection, this electrostatic force, is really winning against these repulsion factors, right? These are the winners, right? And these guys right here are the losers, right? Um, to the, uh, the connection. But that doesn't mean that they don't completely lose, because again, 
these guys try to push away, these guys try to push away, but these guys try to attract right here. And so hence, you have relatively weak bonds because of this issue. Well, are all uh, covalent bonds weak? Well, the strength of the covalent bond really depends on the amount of bonds present. So if you look at this example here for hydrogen and nitrogen, so the one that you just drew from the example, nitrogen has six valence electrons being shared amongst each other. That makes this a triple bond. And a triple bond makes the bond length relatively shorter than the uh, single bonds. As you can see here, that's a distance of the triple bond. And this single bond here, the bond length is a little bit longer. It's almost twice as long, right? And so hence, this is going to be a stronger bond than that hydrogen bond, right? So the more electrons being shared, the more bonds between the two, you're going to have a stronger connection, OK? So try these questions out for your to assess your idea of um, covalent bonds and their strength. If you have any questions, hit me up at tutorial.